good morning everyone in this module we will discuss about the bioconversion of substrate into alcohol and basic principles of the bioconversion so bioconversion of substrate into alcohol so mainly here we will discuss about the ethanol production so ethanol production is based on the two major processes or you can say the techniques the first one is the chemical process and the other one is the fermentation so the chemical process here it is mainly carried out using acid as a catalyst so acid catalyst hydration of the ethylene it forms ethanol and which is referred to as a chemical process so prospheric acid is the most widely used catalyst for the chemical process and to produce ethanol by the hydration of the ethylene whereas the another process alternative to this chemical process is the fermentation technique so production of the ethanol through fermentation process by using different microbial strain is called as a biological process so under anaerobic condition certain species of yeast that is saccharomyces cerevisiae is used for the ethanol production and the bacterial strain that is mainly a zymomonas it metabolizes the sugar into ethanol and the carbon dioxide so likewise there are these two different processes are there but in this particular course our main focus is on the fermentation technique so if you compare the biochemical and the thermochemical conversion of the biomass into a ethanol so there are two different technologies are also there one is called as a biochemical route which mainly carried out using sugar fermentation and another is a thermochemical route so if you look at the technological availability and the mature technology which is available for the biochemical conversion of sucrose or starchy material to the ethanol it plays an important role because the particular platform for the conversion of this material into the ethanol is already available and it can expand to again to the lignocellulosic biomass as well with slight modification in the process conversion technologies otherwise the platform which is required for the conversion purpose from this particular sugar is already in place and it is widely being used for the commercial production as well but the expansion of this particular platform for the lignocellulose biomass it may need certain technological changes that too in the pre treatment stage or that is in the sense of like pre processing of the biomass so that it can be converted into the reducing sugar and the produced reducing sugars can further be converted into the ethanol but the technology which is required for the conversion of lignocellulose biomass to the ethanol is most expensive as well as there are certain issues are also involved in the conversion of this lignocellulose biomass to the ethanol and it faces various challenges in terms of the high process efficiency so to alternative to this particular technology thermochemical conversion of the wood biomass to produce a syn gas using a gasification technology and further this biomass derived syn gas can be fermented to produce the ethanol so as a result there are two different technologies are already available and which are being used for the ethanol production and in that the fermentation is the major step by which the produced syn gas is getting converted into the ethanol whereas in the regular fermentation technology the simple sugars produced from this materials either it is a lignocellulosic biomass or sucrose or the starchy material can be fermented to produce the ethanol but the fermentation of the syn gas from biomass gasification is already which i have mentioned is another process but very limited information is available about this particular process and the complete process analysis also is not available as a result this particular technology of biomass derived syn gas to produce the ethanol is still is in the pilot scale by looking at the comparative analysis of this processes which can be evident that the feedstock which is used in the regular fermentation which is called as a sugar fermentation technique it is in the form of sugar cane starch and the corn whereas in case of thermochemical route the material handled by the process is cellulosic stock wood and msw the reactor type in case of the sugar fermentation is a batch kind of reactor is used whereas in case of thermochemical route of conversion it's a continuous reactor that is the advantage here and the reaction time is basically in case of fermentation is some days it required some days to convert the raw material to the ethanol whereas here it is in minutes so that is a big difference between these two processes apart from that the usage of water here if you see it requires significant amount of water during the process whereas once it is a thermochemical conversion route 
the requirement of water is significantly less and the byproduct which is produced from the regular fermentation which is called as the alcoholic fermentation as well it provides distillers dried grain as a byproduct whereas in case of thermochemical route syngas and the electricity is the byproduct apart from that the yield which achieved using the alcoholic fermentation it is relatively high here whereas in case of the thermochemical route it varies between this particular range which is available in the literature and technological maturity if you see here as i already mentioned uh, due to the technological maturity of the biochemical conversion process to produce the ethanol from this kind of substrate it plays an important role in terms of providing a platform for the expansion of this particular technology for the lignocellulosic biomass as well but as i mentioned very limited information is available about the thermochemical conversion route and as a result this particular technology is tested only at a pilot scale and there are maybe some processes which must be locally producing this kind of material but it is not widely uh, known for at a commercial scale yet however this particular technology if you see the number of plants are available in the united states as well as in the india for the production of the ethanol using this kind of material so the focus point of this particular lecture is on the biochemical route of conversion of the feedstock into the ethanol so this is just for the comparison purpose and just to make you aware about the recent advancement in the conversion of this particular material to a ethanol so there are alternative techniques are also available which also utilizes the fermentation pathway to produce the ethanol but in this case the raw material is nothing but the syn gas produced during the gasification need to be clean first and then after cleaning this syn gas it can be fermented using the suitable microorganism to produce the ethanol so likewise the advancement is also happening in this particular uh, technology to convert the material more faster way and at faster rate into the ethanol but as i mentioned our main focus in this particular course is on the biochemical pathway to produce the ethanol so as i mentioned in the previous slide saccharomyces cerevisiae which is the widely used uh, microbial strain for the fermentation purpose but it is poisoned by ethanol concentrator which is greater than around 10 percent and so higher concentration of 95 percent are produced by distilling and fractionating technique that concentration if it is going beyond 10 percent so it will poison the saccharomyces cerevisiae as a result the ethanol which is produced using this fermentation technology which is a called as a aqueous ethanol this need to be upgraded using the distillation technique to produce a 95 percent ethanol the production of the ethanol from the sugars like sucrose glucose and the fructose is an industrially well established technology and is also considered as the safe technology and eco friendly process as well apart from that the first use of this ethanol blended gasoline as a fuel occurred in 1920s and 1930s and it was in high demand during the world war 2 because of the fuel shortage so accordingly there are several renewable resources like rice wheat corn sorghum grains sugarcane cassava and sugar beet are generally used for the production of the ethanol but now if you look at this particular list of the resources which i have mentioned here so this particular resources are also divided into the two separate class one is called as a class which contain the sucrose containing material and other is considered as a starchy material so the sucrose containing material is mainly considered as a sugar cane and the sugar beet because sugar cane and the sugar beet it mainly contains the sucrose and it is much easier to extract the sucrose from the sugar cane as well as from the sugar beet as a result the production cost for this particular material is relatively less to produce the ethanol compared to the other material such as wheat corn sorghum grain and the cassava derived ethanol why because in this particular pit stock it does not require any hydrothermal treatment that is the advantage of utilizing this material that it does not require any hydrothermal treatment also it does not require any enzymatic hydrolysis for the gelatinization of the starch and its conversion into the sugar as a result the extracted sucrose can directly be fermented to produce the ethanol so just for the comparison purpose we have shown here the conversion pathway of the sugarcane as well as the starchy material so if you just look at the 
conversion pathway for the sugar cane as a material or the sugar beet as a material. So, after the extraction what happens is like here the separation can be done that is nothing but juice and the sucrose fraction can be separated from the bagasse here and the produced sucrose or the juice can be fermented to produce the ethanol as well as the bagasse which is produced during the process can be used to produce the heat or the electricity purpose. So, the number of steps which are involved in this particular process are relatively less as a result the production cost for this particular process is lower than that of the starchy material. Whereas, if you compare the conversion pathway for the starchy material for example, is a corn. So, what happened in this case is like first the material has to pass through a cooking process which is called as a primary process and it is carried out in the temperature range of say 85 to 105 degree C. So, once this particular cooking is carried out which is called as a primary operation in the starchy material. So, what happened in this particular process the gelatinization of the starch happens and then this particular material which is a gelatinization material of the starch it undergoes hydrolysis process using certain enzyme which is called as a amylase enzyme and this particular hydrolysis is carried out in the temperature range of 30 to 60 degree C and this hydrolysis process it converts this starchy gelatinized material into a glucose that is called as a simple sugar and the produced simple sugars further can be converted into the ethanol. So, the number of steps if you see in this particular process requires are relatively more than that of the sucrose material. As a result the production cost of the ethanol from the sucrose containing material is lower than the production cost of the starchy material. Apart from that unlike sucrose fermentation technique in case of the starchy material the hydrolysis of the gelatinization of the material is carried out using a separate enzyme that means amylase and the hydrolyzed solution which is obtained from the starch can be fermented using a saccharomyces cerevisiae to obtain the ethanol. So, if you see the comparison wise as well it requires two enzymes to convert the raw material to the product whereas in this particular case single enzyme operation is sufficient to convert the raw material into the product. So, that is also a difference in the two processes which can be also visualized from this particular chart that it requires one enzymes in this particular step which is called as the enzymatic hydrolysis process to produce the sugar simple sugar in the form of the glucose and the produce sugar undergo fermentation here it also required a another enzyme to produce the ethanol whereas in this particular case it is carried out using a single enzyme and it produces again the same product which is the ethanol. So, by this way the conversion steps which is required for both this material is different as a result. So, production cost for the starchy material is relatively higher than that of the sucrose containing material that also can be visualized from this schematic. So, now the production of this bioethanol from the edible sources like rice, wheat, corn, sorghum grains, sugar cane and its uses in the transportation sector can impose food insecurity to the world population that is one of the major concern about the utilization of this material for the bioethanol production because these all materials are the edible materials and utilization of this material for the bioethanol production and subsequent utilization of this ethanol which is produced using this particular process in the transportation sector it may impose food insecurity to the world population due to the high demand of this ethanol as a fuel in the transportation sector it may eventually increase the price of the food grade material as well. So, that is also a negative impact of utilization of this material for the ethanol production. So, as a result what happens therefore, the interest of modern research has been switched to non food grade feedstock material. So, that is also termed as the second generation biofuel. So, mostly the non food grade feedstock material here is the lignocellulosic material or the agriculture residues. So, among many widely available feedstock material which is called as a inedible feedstock material or I would term it as a agriculture residues such as wheat straw, corn store, sorghum stalks, rice straw and sugar cane bagasse can be considered as the potential and the promising feedstock for the production of the ethanol because these are the materials which are widely available. And if you look at the production of this particular material at the world level, 
So, significant amount of this particular material is available for the utilization purpose and these abundantly available residues are basically used as a animal feed or as a domestic fuel for the heating purpose. Apart from that, there is no much use of this particular agriculture residues for any other purposes. Now, therefore, from this particular availability of this material, if you see only lower amount of the material or very less amount of the material is being used as a animal feed whereas, the rest of the material is disposed of or maybe it is disposed of by burning also. The burning of this material in the open field, it emits greenhouse gases and as a result, the amount of these greenhouse gases which is emitted during this burning, it could be a in a very large amount which could in principle be a inducer of the global warming as well. Thus, instead of burning this material in the open field, it can also be effectively utilized for the production of the bioproduct that too for the production of the bioethanol, which also gives certain benefit in terms of enhancement of the energy resources or you can say strengthening the sustainable energy, increasing the rural economy as well as eco-friendly system as well. Therefore, the utilization of this feedstock can be effectively carried out to produce the bioethanol. Now, if you look at this particular material and the amount of this particular material available in these four countries itself which gives a uh, idea that the significant amount of these materials are available in the raw form and very small amount of these materials are only being used as a animal feed and the remaining material is disposed of as a waste. Now, if you look at the amount of major agriculture crop residues that have been burned in the year 2016 and the CO2 emission caused because of the burning of these resources, you can see in this particular table here. So, this is a significant amount of the CO2 contribution happen in the environment because of the burning of these resources. However, the utilization of these resources for the ethanol production is also not that easy because due to the structural rigidity, the bioethanol production from the lignocellulosic biomass is difficult than that of the sucrose and starchy material and this is mainly because of the structural rigidity of the lignocellulosic biomass and hence because of that several processes have been investigated for the efficient hydrolysis of this lignocellulosic biomass for the conversion into the reducing sugar first and then subsequent conversion of the produce reducing sugar to the ethanol. But out of the several techniques, pretreatment and enzymatic hydrolysis of lignocellulosic biomass are found to be more efficient and most widely used process. So, if you see this particular slide, number of pretreatment techniques have been enlisted here which shows here the steam explosion, ionic liquid and dilute acid, biological process as well, hydrothermal technique, organosolvent and concentrated acid and the alkali technique. Among this technique, the dilute acid technique is the most widely used and the most effective technique for the pretreatment of the lignocellulosic biomass. So, the lignocellulosic biomass which is shown here in this particular diagram is contains cellulose, hemicellulose and the lignin fraction. As we already discussed this point before, the raw materials cannot be used in its raw form directly for the conversion purpose. So, as a result, it has to pass through certain pre-processing stage. Similarly, in this particular stage, the raw feedstock first need to be milled and then sieved to produce smaller particles of the raw material. So, produce smaller particles of raw materials is also have a large surface area for the reaction purpose as well. And then this particular produce material can undergo pretreatment step to hydrolyze the hemicellulose fraction of the material. So, this particular process is carried out using a dilute acid technique. So, the dilute sulfuric acid is used for the pretreatment of the this reduced material. So, as a result what happens is like in this particular stage the hydrolysis of mainly hemicellulose fraction of the lignocellulose biomass takes place and it makes the residual biomass containing cellulose more amenable for the enzymatic hydrolysis. So, this is termed as a residual biomass which can be obtained after the separation of the hydrolyzed from the residual biomass and in this case if you see it mainly contains the cellulose along with some fiber lignin and some fraction of the hemicellulose which could not get converted in the pretreatment step here. So, as a result this is called as a residual biomass which is obtained after the pretreatment of the process raw material. 
and the hydrolyzer produce in this particular case it mainly contains the xylose and some fraction of the glucose because during this pretreatment stage it may happen so that some fraction of the cellulose it may undergo the hydrolysis. So, as a result you can find here that it also produce certain small fraction of the glucose, but mainly it contains the xylose as a pentose sugar along with the arabinose and perfural and the 5-HMF. So, these two compounds are considered as a animator for the ethanol fermentation stage. So, to avoid the formation of this particular compound, the process parameter need to be optimized and operated in such a way that the production of this particular inhibitors can be avoided in the pretreatment stage itself. And this particular residual biomass which mainly contains the cellulose fraction can be hydrolyzed enzymatically to produce mainly a hexo sugar in the form of glucose. And then the produce C6 fraction and the C5 fraction can be fermented using the hexo sugar pathway and the pentose sugar pathway to produce the ethanol. And this is how the conversion of lignocellulosic biomass to ethanol takes place. So, if you see in this particular case, it all depends on the composition of the lignocellulosic biomass and accordingly it can provide the specific yield of the ethanol. The ethanol is produced by the action of microorganism on the carbohydrates and the carbohydrate here are majorly classified into three types in the order of increasing complexity. That means, if you talk about the monosaccharide which is a simple hydrocarbon and which further cannot be hydrolyzed into a simpler compound because this is one of the most simple hydrocarbon which can be obtained from the complex carbohydrate structure of the lignocellulosic biomass and the example is glucose and the fructose. More precisely if you see the glucose and the fructose can be represented by the formula here and this is for the fructose respectively. So, another class of carbohydrate if you see which is a oligo saccharide. So, this oligosaccharides it yield few but definite numbers of monosaccharide molecules on the hydrolysis. So, this is the difference between the monosaccharide and the oligosaccharide as well because oligosaccharides it yield few but definite number of monosaccharide molecule on the hydrolysis. And if you see the example here a disaccharide molecule such as sucrose or maltose both having the formula of like C12, H23 and O11 this produces two monosaccharide molecule on the hydrolysis. So, if you see the oligosaccharides example is sucrose and the maltose. So, hydrolysis of this sucrose and maltose it gives two monosaccharide molecules and the sucrose as we already discussed which is a common sugar occurs naturally in the sugar cane and the beetroot whereas maltose which is also called as a malt sugar is derived from the starch material. So, this is the difference between the monosaccharide and the oligosaccharides. So, monosaccharide is the simple sugar which further cannot be hydrolyzed to produce a simpler compound whereas, oligosaccharide it yields definite number of the monosaccharide molecules on the hydrolysis and polysaccharide is mainly a high molecular mass carbohydrate and which yield large number of monosaccharide molecules on hydrolysis. So, this is difference between the polysaccharides, oligosaccharides and the monosaccharides. Now, if you talk about the example here is mainly a starch and the cellulose and both having the formula is like C6, H10, O5 and number of such glucose units are joined together in a complex chain manner and then it forms the cellulose compound. The starch it occurs naturally in all plants particularly in the seeds and the main sources are maize, barley, rice, potato, cassava and the sorghum. Whereas, the cellulose is the main constituents of the plant cell wall and this we already discussed in our previous lectures as well that cellulose is the main constituent of the plant cell wall and in wood it varies in the range of 45 to 50 percent while in cotton its percentage is around 90 to 95 percent. So, that is the reason the lignocellulose biomass once it has to be utilized for the ethanol production. So, it requires certain treatment stages so that it can be converted into the monosaccharide first which is called as a simple sugar and then the produced monosaccharides can be utilized for the ethanol production. Now, based on this carbohydrate if you just try to see the 
hexose sugar production from this particular carbohydrates. So, there are basically three materials one is the sucrose, starch and the cellulose. So, these materials can be effectively converted into the hexose sugar and the produced hexose sugars can be utilized for the ethanol production. So, let us discuss about these three materials one by one. Sucrose if we talk about here it is the most common disaccharide as we have already discussed in the previous slide and can be produced from the sugar cane and the beetroot. So, the source material for the sucrose is sugar cane and the beetroot and usually commercial sucrose is separated from the cane juice and the molasses which is produced during this process also has a low commercial value. So, as a result the produced molasses can be effectively utilized for the ethanol production. So, that is the also the advantage of this particular material instead of using this sucrose material directly the molasses part of this material can be converted into the ethanol and the technology for the production of the ethanol from the molasses is well established technology and is being used commercially at a large scale for the production of the ethanol as well. So, the molasses itself has about 55 percent of the sugar content and it serves as a potential raw material for the ethanol production. Now, on hydrolysis of this particular compound using dilute acid or the enzyme it gives equal amount of glucose and fructose molecule. So, if you see here the structure of the sucrose this is the structure of the sucrose which undergoes hydrolysis to produce glucose and fructose molecules. The sucrose are readily available in a fermentable form it requires least expensive preparation but are generally most expensive to obtain as well. So, this is very important point about the sucrose conversion to the ethanol. So, similarly if you see the starch material so in case of starch material the hydrolysis of starch material with the dilute sulfuric acid or you can say the enzyme the starch breakdown into maltose and finally gives glucose after subsequent hydrolysis of this maltose as well. So, this is the reaction scheme which is shown here say for example, this is a starch molecule which undergo hydrolysis to produce the maltose and the maltose which undergo subsequent hydrolysis to produce the simple sugar in the form of the glucose which is also called as a hexose sugar and the starch material are often cheaper, but required processing to solubilize and convert starch to sugar as the reason as we already discussed this part in the previous slide in terms of the comparison of the flow chart the starch material it requires more steps to convert the material into the reducing sugar form that is in the form of the exhaust sugar and then it can be subsequently converted into the ethanol compared to the sucrose containing material. Whereas, in case of the cellulose if you see here the cellulose is not hydrolyzed as easily as that of the starch but on heating with dilute sulfuric acid under the high pressure then cellulose converted into a reducing sugar as well. So, in this case if you see this is a cellulose molecules which undergoes dilute acid hydrolysis to produce the glucose molecules. The cellulosic materials are readily available materials, but required most expensive and costly preparation. Finally, the reducing sugar which obtained from the cellulose material can be converted into the ethanol using the fermentation technique. But as I mentioned the cellulosic fraction because of its complex and the rigid structure required most expensive and harsh pretreatment technique so that it can release the reducing sugar and then the produce reducing sugar can be further converted into the ethanol using the fermentation technique which is called as a alcoholic fermentation technique. Now, in terms of the process point of view and the number of steps which are required for the conversion of the lignocellulosic biomass to the ethanol if you look at the chart which is displayed in here on this particular slide. So, the number of steps which are required in this particular process are relatively more than that of the starch and the sucrose containing material whereas, 
the pretreatment step is the common step in the case of the lignosolosing material. If you talk about any lignosolosing material, it has to undergo certain pretreatment stage and the temperature requirement in the pretreatment stage it varies depending on the composition of the material as well. And if you see here, the temperature range is varies from 80 to 180 degree Celsius. So, most preferred technology for the pretreatment of the lignosolosing biomass is a dilute acid pretreatment technique followed by the enzymatic hydrolysis of the residual biomass to produce the sugar. So, in the case of enzymatic hydrolysis as well, which as we have mentioned earlier, so it also carried out using a two different enzyme here because the lignosolosic biomass mainly gives C5 and C6 sugars. So, there is no efficient technology still available for effectively convert the C5 and C6 sugars together into the ethanol as a result C5 and C6 sugars need to be fermented using the exo sugar pathway and the pentose sugar pathway to produce the ethanol. Although the research is underway to have a common enzyme to produce the ethanol from the hexose and the pentose sugars together, but still there is no commercial scale operation in place which converts the pentose and the hexo sugars together in a single operation. So, in this particular process after the dilute acid hydrolysis of the lignosolidic biomass, so it mainly hydrolyzes the hemicellulose fraction of the biomass which gives mainly a pentose sugar that is in the form of the C5 sugar which is called as a xylose along with some fraction of glucose and arabinose. As this particular treatment need to be carried out very effectively as I mentioned because it may produce certain inhibitory compound during the pretreatment stage. So, as a result the process parameters need to be tuned accordingly so that it mainly produces only the xylose and cellulose along with some arabinose compound and some traces of the inhibitory compound. So, that need to be restricted very effectively so that it will not inhibit the fermentation process later. And the residual biomass which is mainly a cellulose fraction along with some lignin fiber and hemicellulose fraction which could not get converted during this pretreatment stage that residual biomass can be hydrolyzed enzymatically to produce the glucose fraction that is called as a C6 sugar. So, the C6 sugars obtained after the enzymatic hydrolysis of the residual biomass if you see here this is called as a enzymatic hydrolysis stage to produce the glucose fraction that is the C6 sugar and this C6 sugars can be fermented to produce the ethanol. Similarly, the C5 sugar fraction can be fermented to produce the ethanol and then the produced ethanol can be converted into a commercial grade ethanol by distillation technique. So, the number of steps which are required for the conversion of lignocellulosic biomass to ethanol are comparatively more than that of the starch and the sucrose containing material. As a result, this particular technique is more expensive and costly compared to the sucrose and the starchy material conversion into the ethanol. So, now once we understand the process of production of the ethanol from the lignocellulosic fraction, so let us talk about the fermentation system using the cellulosic material. So, how it gets converted into the ethanol and the reaction involved in that particular process. So, here the cellulose material is first hydrolyzed to produce the glucose. So, maybe certain sucrose containing materials can also undergo a hydrolysis step to produce the glucose molecule and the glucose which is called as a simple monosaccharide molecule or the sugar compound produced during the hydrolysis steps can undergo a fermentation process to produce two moles of ethanol and two moles of carbon dioxide. So, one mole of glucose molecule it gives two moles of ethanol and two moles of carbon dioxide molecule during the fermentation of the glucose. So, thermal properties of this particular ethanol which is produced during this process if you look at the thermal properties. So, the boiling point of ethanol is 78 degree Celsius and the flash point is around 16.45 and the auto ignition temperature is around 424. But if you talk about the heat of combustion of the ethanol it is around 26.8 mega joule per kg which is relatively good value for the combustion of the ethanol. So, now up till this point we discussed about the different materials which can be effectively utilized for the production of the ethanol that is sucrose, starch material and the cellulose. If you compare this material and just try to see how 
the number of steps involved in this particular conversion of raw material to ethanol are different, then it can be very easy to understand that why the production of the ethanol from the cellulosic biomass is more expensive than that of the starch and the sucrose. So, for example, if the raw material is a natural sugar in the form of say cane, beetroot and the fruit, so simply this material can be crushed to produce the sugar and the residual matter obtained during this process can be separated and can be used as a raw material to generate the heat as well as to produce the electricity. Whereas, in case of starchy material, the examples barley, maize or if it is a root that is a cassava. So, what happened in this case that the material has to pass through certain primary pretreatment stage that is a cooking operation as we have discussed earlier and then after cooking the gelatinization of the starch will occur and then the hydrolysis of this starch is carried out using the enzymatic hydrolysis step and the produced sugar can be fermented to produce the ethanol. So, if you see the number of steps required in this particular step is more than that of the sucrose containing material and hence the production cost of this particular process is relatively higher than that of the sucrose containing material. Even the remaining process are almost same and that is why it is called as a well established technology when it is a fermentation process. But to produce the raw material for the fermentation and the pre processing of the raw material to produce the reducing sugar is more expensive if the feedstocks are getting changed. Now, if you see the example of the cellulose, so in case of cellulose, the example is wood, straw, as we have discussed, or the agriculture residues. So, this kind of materials need to be pre treated first, and after the pre treatment, as we have discussed, the exhaust fraction is get separated during the hydrolysis of the pretreatment stage and the remaining residual matter undergoes the enzymatic hydrolysis to produce the simple sugar that is the glucose and then the produced glucose can be fermented to produce the ethanol. So, likewise the number of steps which are required in the conversion of lignocellulosic biomass to the ethanol are again more than that of the starch and the sucrose containing material and as a result this particular process is quite expensive and costly compared to that of the sucrose and the starch material. And the remaining fraction of the process are almost same. This is a aqueous alcohol which is obtained during the fermentation and this aqueous alcohol can be upgraded using the suitable distillation technique. Now, once we understand the production of this ethanol from different material whether it is a edible source or non-edible source. So, let us discuss about the production of ethanol from the edible source. So, example is sugar corn as a feedstock. So, in this case what happens is like the material need to be pre-processed first and the pre-processed materials can directly undergo the fermentation using microorganism that is the yeast in presence of water so that the pH of the system can be maintained to the required level and then it can be fermented to produce the aqueous alcohol. Because as we have discussed earlier, Saccharomyces cerevisiae it is poisoned by the ethanol concentrator more than the 10 percent. Hence, to maintain that concentration, it can be diluted with the some amount of water so that we can maintain the pH in the proper range so that it will not inhibit the microorganism during the fermentation process. And the produced aqueous ethanol can be distilled to obtain 95 percent commercial grade ethanol here, which is called as a biethanol as well and the residue produced during this particular process it act as a animal feed. So, this is how the production of the ethanol takes place from the edible source as a raw material. However, if we discuss the ethanol production from the non-edible feedstock, now the number of operations required in this process are relatively higher than that of the edible feedstock. Let us see the example of the cellulosic feedstock here. So, the cellulosic material first need to be pre treated so that it can separate the hemicellulose fraction from the cellulose fraction here and the hemicellulose fraction obtained after the pre treatment can be separated in the form of the hydrolysate that contains mainly the C5 sugar and then the produce syrup of the hemicellulose fraction that is the pentose sugar can be fermented to produce the ethanol. So, this is the operation which carried out for the separation of the pentose sugar from the residual biomass 
after the pretreatment stage and once the residual biomass obtained after the pretreatment stage is mainly in the form of cellulose and the lignin fibers with small traces of hemicellulose fraction which could not get treated in the acid pretreatment stage. So, this residual biomass can be enzymatically hydrolyzed to produce the C6 sugar that is called as a glucose sugar and this is called as a C5 sugar mainly a xylene that is a xylose. So, the C6 sugars obtained from the enzymatic hydrolysis of the residual biomass can undergo fermentation to produce again the aqueous alcohol. So, the aqueous alcohol obtained from the C5 fraction and the aqueous alcohol which is obtained from the C6 fraction can be distilled to produce the cellulosic ethanol. So, this is how is the difference between the production of the ethanol from the lignocellulosic biomass that is a non-edible feedstock and the production of the ethanol from the edible feedstock that is mainly a sugar and corn. And the lignin fraction obtained from both this process is used to generate process steam. So, the residual matter which is produced during the entire process can be used to generate the process steam. So, this is how the entire process of the production of the ethanol from the lignocellulosic biomass is takes place. So, now if you consider the production of the ethanol from this lignocellulosic biomass, in this case the pyruvate is a key branching point in fermentation technique. Because in the ethanolic type of fermentation, the pyruvate is metabolized to produce acetaldehyde and the carbon dioxide and the produce acetaldehyde is further reduced to form the ethanol. So, this is how the pathway of the ethanol production happens because it mainly depends on the pyruvate because it is considered as a key branching point in the fermentation process of which is mainly the ethanolic fermentation. And in this particular process, theoretically it is possible to achieve 2 moles of ethanol as I mentioned earlier and if you remember our previous discussion in the previous slide, the 1 mole of glucose mainly produced 2 moles of ethanol by converting the glucose and 2 moles of CO2 and even on the weight basis if you see it mainly produces around 51 conversion of glucose into the ethanol. So, that means mainly it is a 51 percent of conversion of ethanol theoretically happens in the reaction to convert into the ethanol. If you just see the stoichiometry of the uh, reaction scheme, it can be observed that it mainly produces around 51 percent of the ethanol stoichiometrically that is called as a theoretically from the glucose molecule that is called as a hexose sugar. And in practice only 90 to 95 percent of theoretical amount of ethanol can be achieved because some of the pyruvate produced during the process is consumed for cellular material during the culture growth and it is not available to serve as an electron acceptor. So, because of that the ethanol conversion which you can achieve is around like 90 to 95 percent compared to that of the theoretical amount of the ethanol. Apart from that some low level of the higher alcohols are also getting produced during this particular process. So, for the comparison purpose we have shown here some type of fermentation technologies and the microorganism which is used for the fermentation purpose. So, if you see this particular table the first point here is about the ethanolic fermentation. So, if you see the ethanolic fermentation here which mainly carried out using the microorganism that is yeast and it produces ethanol as a product along with carbon dioxide oxide. However, if you consider the mix acid type fermentation process in this particular case the microorganism which is used for the mix acid fermentation is zymomonas and the product obtained during this particular process are mix acid in the form of lactic acid, formic acid, acetic acid along with that it also produces the carbon dioxide, hydrogen and ethanol, but mainly it produces the mix acids along with the ethanol as well. Whereas, if you see the third process that is a butan dioxide fermentation. So, in this case it also produces mix acid along with the butanol that is called as a 2,3 butan diol 
and the microorganism which is used in this particular case is bacillus. So, this particular table is mainly used here just to compare the type of fermentation technology. Again, I am emphasizing here our main focus in this particular course is about the alcoholic fermentation technique only. Now, after understanding the process which is used for the production of the ethanol, either it is a sucrose containing material, starch material or the lignocellulosic material, let us see how the theoretical ethanol yield can be calculated from the stoichiometry of the particular reaction. Because if it is a lignocellulosic based material, then as I mentioned, it contains the C5 and the C6 sugars. So, if you talk about the C6 sugar, the C6 sugars can be converted to yield 2 moles of ethanol along with 2 moles of carbon dioxide. Whereas, if it is a C5 sugar, so the C5 sugar in the form of C5, S10 and the O5 which is called as a pentose sugar, it produces around 5 moles of ethanol and 5 moles of carbon dioxide. So, the theoretical ethanol yield for this particular sugar fractions can be calculated using the simple equation and Cs in this particular equation, it represents the concentration of sugars either C6 or C5 which are present in the lignocellulosic biomass. Whereas, 0.51 is the theoretical ethanol yield constant which is used for the calculation of the theoretical ethanol yield. And the theoretical ethanol yield obtained from this equation, it is in the form of kilogram per ton of biomass which is used for the conversion purpose. Whereas, if we need to convert this value into liter per ton, so it can be divided using the density of the ethanol and it gives the value in the form of liters per ton of the material. So, this is how the theoretical ethanol yield for the lignocellulosic biomass or the sugars contained in the lignocellulosic biomass can be calculated. So, just to have the idea about the different lignocellulosic biomass and its theoretical ethanol yield, this particular table is summarized here just to show the theoretical ethanol yield from the different lignocellulosic biomass. As we have just discussed in the previous slide, the theoretical ethanol yield is calculated based on the sugar concentration in the lignocellulosic biomass. And as we already discussed this point multiple times, the composition of the cellulose and the hemicellulose in the lignocellulosic biomass, it differs from hardwood material to the softwood material. As a result, even in the hardwood material, we can observe that there is a variation in the cellulose and the hemicellulose fraction present in the biomass. So, as a result, it is bound to have some changes into the theoretical ethanol yield of this lignocellulosic biomass. For example, if you see the rice straw, the carbohydrate content in the rice straw is around 599. That means, this much kg per ton of carbohydrates are present in the rice straw. So, now based on this, if you just try to calculate the theoretical ethanol yield for the rice straw, it comes to be around 30.5. This is on kilogram per ton basis. If you convert again this value in the form of liters per ton, so it comes around 387. Similarly, if the material is a wheat straw, now the carbohydrate content in this particular material is 616 kilogram per ton of the biomass. So, obviously, the theoretical ethanol yield which can be achieved from this particular raw material is higher than the rice straw because the carbonated fraction itself is more in the wheat straw compared to the rice straw and obviously it will reflect the theoretical ethanol in the liters per ton as well. Whereas, when it is a sugar can bagasse, again the carbonated fraction is more or less similar to that of the rice straw and hence the theoretical ethanol yield obtained in this particular case is close to or similar to the rice straw. While the corn stover, it has a carbonated fraction of 596, accordingly the theoretical ethanol yield is different than the remaining material. So, likewise the theoretical ethanol yield can be calculated for the specific feedstock which is being used for the ethanol production and based on that also the process efficiency can be calculated for the specific feedstock. After understanding the theoretical ethanol yield from the lignocellulosic biomass, now let us compare the liquid properties of the ethanol which is produced from this particular raw material and compare these properties with the 
fuel grade material that is a conventional fuel as well. So, if you just try to compare this properties of the liquid fuel with alcohol that is mainly the methanol and the ethanol, we can see that the boiling point in case of the ethanol is a one temperature because the ethanol is a single chemical. Whereas, in case of the fuel, it has a wide range of the chemical compound. As a result, its boiling point is also having a certain wide range which varies from this particular range. While in case of the lower calorific value, if you see the lower calorific value of the ethanol is 26.9 which is significantly lower than that of the fuels. This is mainly because the ethanol contains oxygen and the fuels do not and that is what is the reason that the ethanol has significantly lower heating value than that of the conventional fuel. Now, if you just talk about the uses of this ethanol, so the hydrous ethanol which is 55 percent by volume or the you can say a commercial ethanol, it is used as a fuel in the specially designed IC engines with 25 percent mileage penalty compared to the conventional vehicles. It is blended up to 22 percent of this anhydrous ethanol whereas, blending of this anhydrous ethanol which is 99.7 percent by volume with a petrol, it requires no engine modification and incurred no mileage penalty and is being used by a large number of automobiles in the world, but it should be a anhydrous ethanol. Then it requires no engine modification as well and also it incurred no mileage penalty. Whereas, if it is a commercial grade ethanol which is a 95 percent by volume, then it required some engine modification moreover it also incurred around 25 percent of the mileage penalty compared to the conventional vehicles. Apart from that the anhydrous ethanol is required for the purpose of blending of petrol and the ethanol additive has anti knock properties and is preferred to more commonly use tetraethyl lead which produces serious air pollution and that is the reason the ethanol is also blended in the petrol so that the air pollution can be avoided because of this commonly used tetraethyl lead. And the excellent combustion properties of the ethanol enables an engine to produce around 20 percent more power than that of the conventional petrol as well. So, this all talks about the uses and advantages of using ethanol as a petroleum blend in the conventional petrol. So, in this particular lecture, we discuss about the ethanolic fermentation mainly the alcoholic fermentation technique and how it is important to convert the lignosolubic biomass to ethanol rather than using the edible grade feedstock. So, with this we will end our lecture here and in the next lecture we will discuss about the thermochemical conversion of biomass into solid liquid and the gaseous fuels. Regarding this lecture if you have any doubt feel free to contact me at vvgoud at the rate iitg.ac.in. Thank you.